Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube and I'm going to be coloring some complimentary foxes today. That does not mean foxes who are nice to each other, but I'm using complimentary colors. A yellow and two purples. One is a reddish purple and one is a bluish purple. And yellow and purple are opposite on the color wheel. If you Google color wheel, you can find out what the complementary color is for any color. And I'm going to be using them to create some really interesting colors on these foxes, which are by Technique Tuesday. It's a stamp set called Frederick and Fiona. And I stamped and masked a bunch of them. There's only two foxes in the set, but I added a whole bunch of them on here so I'd have lots of foxes to color because I love coloring foxes. And the middle fox that's a little bit taller, I stamped the head of the fox and then I stamped the feet and I drew the line in between so that I could make one a little bit taller and they didn't look like they were all the same two foxes. This is all stamped also with some memento ink on Nina cream colored cardstock. So there's lots of different cardstocks you can use, but I like the Nina since I use that for a lot of my other stuff anyway. I've got my yellow down and I'm adding the reddish purple now. The reddish purple is going to turn it into kind of an orange color. And I could have used just a plain old orange in here with maybe some browns for the shadows, but watch how interestingly the color develops when I'm layering these because I'm still going to see some of that yellow through the purple, which is going to give it a different kind of both texture and color because these colors can be seen through each other when I'm using a really light touch. If you get really heavy with the pencil, it's going to get waxy. You're not going to see as much below. If you get any transparency at all, it's going to be a cloudy kind of a look. Whereas when I use this really light touch with a really sharp pencil, it helps to allow some of that color from underneath to show through. With the light touch, I can also fill in the texture so that if I miss some areas on the yellow underneath, I can fix some of that with this reddish purple on top. And you can see that orange starting to come out of the paper kind of. It just feels like it's starting to grow in its intensity. And I can get a little heavier pressure in the shadow areas at this point, but not very much because I still want to make that shadow with a darker color. So I'm just going to keep working at this until I get an overall evenness, an overall kind of an orange look to make sure that I filled in all the areas where I want shadows. I want to put a little bit at the base of the ears to give them just a slight bit of dimension. And then go back into a few areas that I want to touch up. And as I said, if it's a really sharp pencil and I use the Quiet Sharp Pencil Sharpener. It's a link in the description to all the supplies, by the way. The Quiet Sharp Pencil Sharpener gives it a, this nice, really long point, And it also doesn't eat up your pencil. It has in what they call auto stop or pencil stop. And there's not very many pencil sharpeners made nowadays that do, but I warn you, it's a giant pencil sharpener. Anybody who already has one, you can leave comments in this comment section telling everybody just how big it is because it's giant. It's a, a school pencil sharpener. So just about done here now with the reddish purple. I'm going to sharpen up my bluish purple pencil now and deepen up the shadow and intensify some of that color. And you're going to watch the color change a little bit as well as I layer over this bluer purple. And it's a little bit slightly off on the color wheel when you use the reddish purple and the bluish purple together. And it's going to give me a really interesting blend across them. And I just love the way this color comes through. It's nothing like what it would be if I used a brown pencil in there to create those shadows. So try doing some interesting things with your colors once in a while, even if you just have a scrap piece of paper, stamp a fox on it and, you know, stamp a bunch of foxes and try a bunch of different color combinations. Just do their heads. Don't, you know, spend your time doing the whole thing, but you can try different shades of yellow with different shades of purple and see what those look like. See how they layer on top of each other. And it also gives you a chance to practice that really soft pencil technique, just, just very, very lightly hitting that paper with it. Now I'm going to zoom through the rest of this because now you've seen how I color the fox. That was all at 100% speed and this is like 1200%, but it's kind of fun watching that dimension develop and watching that color come out when you watch it really fast. The Hey Foxy was stamped on there before I got started, of course, 
and I stamped that in a pigment ink from Avery L because I wanted to color over the word foxy a little bit and give it some of the same colors that I gave to the foxes. So that is going to be nice and dry. You don't want to go over any wet ink with your colored pencils because you could pick up some of that ink on the pencil itself. You can sharpen it off, of course. So if you sharpen it, it's going to get rid of that, but it's going to go on a lot better if the ink is good and dry. The way that I masked these was to stamp the foxes that were in front first. So the, the first one that I colored and then the one all the way to the left were the first ones because you can see they're in the very front. I cut some masking paper to put over top of them, stamped on the masking paper, trimmed that out, and then stuck it down on top of them so I could stamp the ones behind. And that middle fox, of course, was stretched. So I stamped the head and then stamped the feet and then drew the body in between so that I'd have one that was taller because there are only two foxes in the stamp set and I wanted it to look like there were some different foxes in here. With little foxes like this, you could also stamp their heads and then stamp their bodies separately just by doing some creative masking so that their heads would tilt different directions and then they would look like even more different foxes. But I thought if I was going to be doing a couple of foxes across the card, as long as they were layered behind each other, they may not look like they're exactly the identical fox. And I think the look that I'm getting from this is kind of glowing orange, yellow, purple color that I'm creating is gonna be interesting enough that I'm not too worried about the, the repetition of the same fox being much of an issue on the card. Um, of course, you can always just stamp one or two foxes on your card and color them that way. So now I'm going to add the reddish purple to the word foxy and I'm just going to do some shading at the bottom and then just on the top of the F and the other shading I'm going to be adding is down at the base of the foxy and then just a little bit extra up at the top. Color their noses purple and then I just glued it onto a card base. Kept it really simple. It's a one layer card if you don't count the fact that I layered this paper that I colored on on top of the card base. So it's a lot of fun to do. It was a really interesting color experiment. I hope you might try something like this sometime. If you do, tag me on Instagram. You can click on my face to subscribe to my channel. There's also a couple other pencil videos if you're interested in watching some of that and learning a little bit more. You can click on any of the links in the doobly-doo down below to find my blog and get some pinnable pictures that you can mark for yourself for the future. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.